your eternity. This isn't just who you're going to marry or what you're going to do for a job. This is where you're going to spend forever. Is it beyond me? Do you want to hit it? Do you think there's a heaven and a hell? Mm, no. You've got no hope in your death? You're just waiting for death to come? Yeah, I want to see what happens. I don't think it's possible to know. Do you believe in God? No. So you're an atheist? Yes. Why? I don't think there's enough proof to say that there is a God. If I gave you proof, would you change your mind? Yeah, it would have to be pretty good proof. I can give you pretty good proof, absolute scientific proof, in about one minute. Should we give it a try? Sure. Every building is proof of a builder. Every painting is scientific proof of a painter. We know that because a building cannot build itself, it's impossible, and a painting cannot paint itself. Builder could have died 100 years ago, but you know there was a builder because the building's there. Painter could have died 300 years ago, but you know there was a painter because paintings don't paint themselves. Creation is evidence of a creator. Flowers and birds and trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, puppies and kittens, male and female, the seasons, the fruits, all these things are evidence of the genius of God's creative hand. An atheist believes the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. That's your alternative. That's where you fall back to. If you believe there was no creator, then everything was created by nothing. Not from nothing, but by nothing. And that's scientifically impossible. Nothing cannot create anything because it's nothing. That's why the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there's no God. Let me ask you another question. Sorry? Who created God? You know, there are certain things in life that are very sure, and that is when an atheist gets proof of God's existence, they default to that question, who created God? Here's the answer. God is without the dimension of time. We are in time, we have to wait for time to pass, but God dwells in eternity, and that's where you're going to go when you die. So here's a question for you, Vanessa. Is your life pleasing to God, or are you doing things that are morally frowned upon by Him? probably say I would do things that are morally frowned upon him. You see, that's why we deny God's existence, because it makes us feel uncomfortable that God sees us. Do you know that God knows how many hairs are on your head? Did you know that? Mm. Every single one is known by God. In fact, he knows intimately the middle atom that makes up your eyeball, because he made it. He gave you your brain, your blood, your skin. Everything about you was given to you by God. He gave you the ability to enjoy good music, hearing, the ability to enjoy the blueness of the sky, eyesight, the ability to think, that's your brain. Do you think you're a good person? I try to be. Okay. This is a deliberate swing from her intellect to her conscience, because my agenda is not to convince her that God exists. She already knows that. God's given light to every single person. My agenda is to show her her need of God's forgiveness. I want to share the gospel with her because that's the power of God to salvation. That's the way she can find everlasting life. And for the gospel to make sense, I've got to take her through the commandments. It is the bow of the moral law that gives the arrow of the gospel its thrust. Okay. I'm going to put it to the test. Can you be honest with me? Yeah. How many lies have you told in your life? Probably a lie. I couldn't count. So what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So what are you? A liar. Do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small, irrespective of its value? Yes. I have. What do you call someone who steals? A thief. So what are you? A thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? Mm, probably. Mm -hmm. Do you love your mum? Yes. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? No. Why not? Because you respect her and you love her. But you've taken the name of the God that gave you a mother and gave you life and used it as a cuss word. Very serious. It's called blasphemy. Okay, going personal. Jesus said if you look with lust, sexual desire at a guy, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever done that? Yes. So here's a summation. This is for you to judge yourself. I'm not judging you. But Vanessa, you told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. You have to face God on judgment day. If he judges you by those commandments, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. According to God. Yeah. Do you believe in God? No. So you're an atheist? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Breaks my heart. That horrifies me. 
I don't want you to end up in hell. Do you know what death is according to the Bible? Uh, no. It's wages. Did you know that? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Even people who don't sin die. Can you think of anyone who hasn't sinned? No. Um, no, that's because everything is a sin. <laughs> Such as? <laughs> like drinking, right? No, that's not a sin. Drunkenness is a sin, but drinking isn't. You can drink wine with your meals if you feel to, but just don't get drunk because it's a poison. When you're intoxicated, that means you've got poison and you're toxic. And so the Bible just gives some practical guidelines. What else is a sin? We love sin, we love that which is wrong. The Bible says that. So back to what I was saying. Death is wages that God is paying you. It's like a judge looks at a criminal that's murdered three people. And the judge says, you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what you do. This is what we're paying you. And Vanessa, sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. So let's see how your knowledge is. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? God did something wonderful. Do you know what he did? No. You actually do, but you don't value it because you don't understand it. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? Oh, he died for us. But... He died for our sins. Now, most people know that, but they don't know this. And if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you, so don't be distracted, okay? The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said, it is finished, just as he died. He was saying, paid in full. It's like being in court and having a stack of speeding fines, and the judge says, well, you've got these fines, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. You can leave. You can leave because someone paid your fine. Well, God can take the death sentence off you and let you live forever legally because Jesus paid the fine and full on that cross. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death, and all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins, that's turn from them, and trust in Jesus as your Savior, like you trust a parachute. If you're going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, why would you put on a parachute? To not die. Yeah, to not die, and your motive would be fear. You don't want to hit the ground at 120 miles an hour on your face. So that fear is your friend, not your enemy. And Vanessa, because I care about you, I've tried to put the fear of God in you today, to scare you a little, to say this is deadly serious, hoping you'll see that fear as your friend, not your enemy, because it'll drive you to the foot of the cross where you can find everlasting life. Is this making sense? Yes. You going to think about what we talked about? Yeah, I will. When do you think you'll repent and put your faith in Christ? I don't know. Let me speed it up for you. When are you going to die? I don't know. Could be tonight in your sleep, couldn't it? 150,000 people die every 24 hours, and youth is no guarantee of old age. So there's a sense of urgency. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't put it off. This is your eternity. This isn't just who you're going to marry or what you're going to do for a job. This is where you're going to spend forever. There's a bee on me. Do you want to hit it? Where is that? On your shoulder. Oh dear. <laughs> so what are we going to do? I'm going to close this now before the beat. But please think about what we talked about. Okay. Can I uh, give you a free Gospel of John? What? Do you know what a Gospel of John is? It's the fourth book of the New Testament. Okay, and you'll really enjoy it. And is that bee left? Mm He's -hmm. gone? Yeah. Oh, good. So you've got to think about what we talked about. Yes. Let me get you that Gospel of John. Open it up. Looks like a bundle of money because it's more precious than all the money in the world because it tells you how to find everlasting life. Do you think you'll read it? Yeah. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith and much more. The Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com.